What is a fiduciary duty? Let's talk about this concept today because it's huge for business owners. Why does it matter? Because as a business owner, it defines what your legal obligations are. It's this whole body of law that says even though there's no state statute that's been passed by the legislature, and even though there's no federal law passed by Congress, you still have legal duties. These duties are not written necessarily in any statute, code, or regulation. You might say, where are they? They're in what's called the common law. In other words, they are written in cases, cases that you've never read, and yet you are liable to comply with them. That's why it is so important for you to understand what are fiduciary duties because any person who is in leadership in a nonprofit organization or a for profit company, any person who's a manager, a supervisor, managing projects, even every employee owes fiduciary duties. And again, these duties are not written in statutes, regulations, or code. They are in what's called the common law. In other words, they've been identified by courts over the years, and you are responsible to comply with them. Let's face it, most people don't even know what they are. I'm not going to get into whether that's right or wrong. It is what it is. You are responsible to know these laws, and if you don't know them and you violate them, you're still liable for the consequences. You can't say, hey, judge, I didn't know about fiduciary duties. I didn't know about this area of law, so can you cut me a break? Judges will say, the law doesn't care whether you know about it. The law only cares whether you complied with it or not. Because if you violate fiduciary duties, and then you cause harm to somebody through that violation, you will be liable personally for that harm. Not your corporation, not your LLC. They might have liability too, but you have personal liability if you violate fiduciary duties. What are these fiduciary duties? First, the fiduciary duty of loyalty is a big one. This is the one that applies to every employee. Every employee owes a duty of loyalty to their employer. So, that means if an employee learns of important information that is relevant to the employer's business, the employee has a duty of loyalty to share that information with the employer. If the employee is handling money for the employer, the employee has a duty to be loyal to the employer and make sure that money is protected for the employer, not misappropriated for some other purpose. Now, obviously we know if the employee steals money, that's wrong. That's gonna violate criminal laws. But what we're talking about here is not necessarily the employee benefiting themselves, but let's say, for example, the employee knows that when expense reports come in, some of the expenses are not approved by the employer or not for the benefit of the employer. Let's say hypothetically, there is no policy regarding what expenses should be covered by the employer. And one of the other employees turns in a family Disney World trip, all the expenses associated with that. And you work in the finance department and you process these expense reports. And you call up the employee and say, hey, did you do any business here? Is there any business purpose to this? And the, the person says, no. We just had a great time as a family. And I figured, hey, the worst that happens is the employer rejects it. If you, as the person approving expense reports, use the employer's money to approve, to be reimbursed that Disney World trip, you have just violated the fiduciary duty of loyalty. What does that mean? It means you have personal liability for the amount of the expense or the money that was transferred from the company 
to another employee for a wrongful purpose. That's why the fiduciary duty of loyalty is so important. It's an important to preserve the resources of the employer and to allocate the resources appropriately. Not just money, information. So if you learn important information that would affect the company, you have a duty to pass that along to the employer. Say, for example, that the employer is preparing to launch a product that will revolutionize your industry. And while you are at a trade show talking with somebody, you find out a competitor is going to be launching a very similar product. And you say to yourself, you know what, this is really interesting. I bet my, I know my employer would love to know that information, but I think I'm not going to share it because I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to work with this employer. In fact, I think I might go apply to the competitor. So you decide not to share that information with your employer. That is public information you gained as an employee of the employer that has a material effect on the employer. It would be important for the employer to know. You have a fiduciary duty of loyalty to share that information with the employer. If you fail to do that, and let's say hypothetically, you then leave two weeks later and you go work at the competitor. And if you had shared that information with the employer, they would have had a jump on the competitor. Let's say hypothetically in this little scenario, they would have had a million dollars in sales. You would have personal liability to the extent that your breach of fiduciary duty in not sharing important information you had with your employer hurt the employer. Any harm that resulted to the employer by you not sharing that information that you had in your possession, you would be personally liable to the employer. Now there might be some statutes that modify this, but that gives you a general idea of the fiduciary duty of loyalty that all employees owe to an employer. The fiduciary duty of loyalty is even more important if you're a manager of the business, a member of the board of directors or board of governors, if you're an officer like a president or a supervisor. It's also important if you are in some other role where you're working on someone's behalf, like a lawyer is considered a fiduciary of the client. A financial advisor is often considered a fiduciary of the investor. There are fiduciary duties that various professions and individuals have to the person they are working for. And one of those most fundamental ones is the fiduciary duty of loyalty. Now, a part of fiduciary duty of loyalty is the opportunities that are coming along. For example, you work for a company that does oil mining and they're constantly looking for oil somewhere into the ground. And let's say you learn of a plot of land that's available for sale and it would be incredible with oil. If you go buy that plot of land yourself, leave the company and you start your own oil company, you are violating the fiduciary duty of loyalty because the opportunity you learned about was deemed owned by the company because you were employed by the company at that time. This is called the Corporate Opportunity Doctrine. Under the Corporate Opportunity Doctrine, if anyone in the corporation learns about an opportunity, they need to present that opportunity to the corporation before they take advantage of it themselves. Now, if you present it to the corporation and the corporation declines, then you have every right to take advantage of it yourself before somebody else in the public. But you need to present that opportunity to the corporation first. Another fiduciary duty is the duty of honesty, which includes not just honesty about questions you are asked, but honesty as far as full candor. So say, for example, your boss says, are you aware of this particular company offering a competitive product in our niche. And let's say hypothetically you're not aware of that company offering a competitive product, but you know another one that the boss would love to know about. 
If you say, oh no, I, I don't know of that particular company offering a competitive product and you fail to mention the other one that you know the boss would have wanted to know about, you have just violated the fiduciary duty of honesty or full candor. Now, why am I using the employee scenario when this is a video for business owners? Because at a minimum, employees owe these duties. To much greater extent, managers, business owners, presidents, uh, partners, co-shareholders owe these duties. Duty of loyalty, duty to share corporate opportunities or LLC opportunities, duty to be honest, duty of full candor and the sharing of all important information. Now, obviously, you don't have to share all information. It's only the important stuff. Under law, we call that material. So you have a duty to share material information to the company that you work for, other business owners you have, the board, or whoever it is that you are working for. Business owners owe fiduciary duties to each other. Attorney owes fiduciary duties to the client. Partners owe fiduciary duties to each other. Shareholders owe fiduciary duties to each other and the corporation. So fiduciary duties are a significant area of law that we are held to even though we may not even know about it. There's one other important fiduciary duty that applies to everyone, but there's a huge exception. It's called the duty of care. Everybody has a duty to act as a reasonably prudent person would in similar circumstances. That's the duty of care. If you are acting reasonably and you're doing what a reasonably prudent person would, then you have fulfilled your duty of care. Even if a bad thing happens, if you did what a reasonably prudent person would, you're fine. But here's the problem. A lot of times bad things happen. And then after the fact, people say, well, you should have done this or you should have done that. It's kind of like armchair quarterbacking. That phrase comes from the people who watch television and watch a football game from the comfort of their couch or recliner. And after a play happens, they go, what was the quarterback thinking? Or what was the coach thinking? They should have done this. They should have done that. You're essentially sitting with your arms on the armchair, pretending like you could quarterback better if only they would seek your advice on how to manage this NHL team. It's easy in hindsight to say you should have done this better, you should have done that better. And so because that would essentially make every person liable for every mistake out there, of course you can find something someone should have done better afterwards. There's a legal doctrine that's been developed. It's called the business judgment rule. It basically says if you did what a reasonably prudent person would have done, at the time of the decision, it doesn't matter if bad things happened after that. All that matters is at the time, did you gather all the information you could or that a reasonably prudent person would? Did you ask the right questions that a reasonably prudent person would? And did you make a thoughtful decision that a reasonably prudent person would? Now, if you benefited from the transaction, like you decided, hey, I'm going to sell property for the company and the buyer is you and so you sold it at half price and now you benefited, you don't have the benefit of the business judgment rule. So if you're on the other side of the transaction, in other words, you have an interest in the deal, a personal interest, the business judgment rule does not protect you. But to the extent you are disinterested, so you have no involvement in the deal, you are protected by the business judgment rule. So even if bad stuff happens, you've not violated your fiduciary duty of care as long as you did what a reasonably prudent person would with the knowledge, information, and opportunity you had at that time. That's the fiduciary duty of care. There's one other fiduciary duty, the duty of good faith. In other words, when you enter into a contract, you need to be entering into it with the intention of good faith. You are not entering a contract, for example, with bad faith, which is with the intention to harm the other side or hurt them in a way that a court later would go, that's dirty, that's unfair, that's wrong. 
it might not technically be illegal, but you had false and wrong motives, and thus you entered a contract with bad faith. The duty of good faith applies to every relationship. Basically, if a court says, you're a bad guy, you did the wrong thing, you had an ulterior motive that was greedy, bad, or deceptive, if you do any engagement with bad faith, courts can conclude you have violated the duty of good faith, and thus you have some liability. The duty of good faith applies to all contracts and all fiduciary relationships, so business owners to companies, employees to companies, etc. By knowing the fiduciary duties that exist in the law, you are empowered to not only make sure that your conduct complies with the fiduciary duties, but also if you deal with somebody who does something wrong, but you think, well, there may not be a law against it, you can ask yourself, did they violate a fiduciary duty? Because if they did and harm resulted to you from that, there's a good chance they are liable for the harm that happened to you. So fiduciary duties are a hidden part of the law. They're not in statutes, codes, or regulations necessarily. They're certainly not all in there. There are references to them from time to time. But it is an important area of law that most business owners don't know about, but now you know. So you can make sure you follow your fiduciary duties, you help your employees and your teams follow their fiduciary duties, and if somebody violates their fiduciary duties, you have spotted an issue to discuss with your attorney to see what needs to be done and what rights do you have when somebody else violates fiduciary duties to you. If you are the type of person who is interested in avoiding legal problems by growing a great, healthy company, a strong team where you are managing businesses and you are managing the people in your company or companies, you are welcome to get our free resource which equips you with what you need to know in contract law, intellectual property law, compliance with state and federal laws, and all sorts of other important areas that come up in running a business as an entrepreneur and as a leader of an entrepreneurial company. You can get it at aaronhall.com slash free. There's no charge, and it's a way that you can get access to exclusive resources, videos, checklists, etc. that I've put out to help guide business owners to avoid problems. This is all part of this YouTube channel in an effort to help business owners avoid problems, to save money on legal fees, to avoid the painful distractions that lawsuits can bring or government investigations. The last thing you want to be is having a target on your back for lawsuits or government audits or investigations. If you go to aaronhall.com slash free, you will start getting access to the resources so that you can become empowered with education to avoid these problems in your company so you can achieve business success and have a successful life. I'm Aaron Hall, an attorney for business owners and entrepreneurial companies. To learn more about me, feel free to go to aaronhall.com.